It's Martin North and John Adams in the interest of the people. Hello, John. Hello, sir. How are you going? Not too bad. So we are not superhuman. We are not superhuman. Uh, and we're going to sort of uh, talk about all of these uh, reasons I continually hear um, private feedback, social media, public commentary, and I'm sure you're hearing the same um, that uh, you know we're, we're, we're you know we're sort of extremists uh, in terms of in terms of our um, diagnosis of what's really happening in the economy, in terms of potential um, uh, outcomes that could happen uh, in terms of large house pride falls or, or large amounts of defaults or unemployment, all of this sort of stuff. Uh, and, and there's a, a series of consistent themes that are coming through um, in that um, you know uh, those things happen overseas. Uh, Australia is different. Um, you know, you know. I've heard things around. You know, things like she'll be right. The government won't allow a crisis to happen. Um, uh, you know, uh, this time is different. Uh, the way economics, uh, the way the global economy runs now, is different to say ten years ago or at the time of the of, of the Great Depression. Um, uh, and, and and even th- you know things like well, house prices will never fall will come down a bit, but we're never going to see a big crash because it because it never does. So 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 these are some consistent themes that uh, I, I heard last year. I've heard for the last three four years as I've been doing a, a number of these articles about Armageddon. Um, and, and one viewer after our last episode sent me a, a, a note um, about a, a recent um, uh, experience that he had up in Brisbane. And I thought it'd be uh, really interesting to share with the audience. But, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm here to declare that the laws of economics, um, uh, you know, do operate in this country. Um, if something has happened overseas, it can happen here. We do not have supernatural powers. We are not unique um, I mean, the only really unique thing Australia has economically is we have a lot of natural resources, and those natural resources can give us a buffer um, during certain swings in the in, in the economic cycle. But but beyond that, um, you know, the, the broad thesis I have is we have five thousand years of human history, and any time that debt got out of control, um, no matter which part of the world, which civilization, w- w- which you know race, whatever the case may be. Debt becomes um, a, a really big issue. Uh, it was the downfall of the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the British, the Soviet Union. Uh, we have multiple examples of where debt becomes too extreme. You get bad economic outcomes. And, and, and for someone in this country, to th- whether you're at the RBA or in the financial media or if you're just uh, like an average Joe on the street, for someone to think that these economic rules and history is somehow uh, not going to happen here. Uh, I mean, the only way that it, can, it can't happen is if we have supernatural powers. And um, I don't think we have those powers. Right. So my theory is it's a bit like gravity, right? Gravity is pretty much the same all around the world, right? It would be like saying, yes, but gravity is different in Australia. Yeah. So I'll give you an example, John, you know, the ME report that just came out recently said that more than half of households were still extremely positive about home prices. I think they're going to go up in the next year. Exactly. And, and, and one of the interesting things that we saw this week, and I know you did a, a post on DFA, w- uh, was the ABS data about lending. So the, the flow of credit is continuing to slow. Um, and, and obviously that points to continual house price falls coming uh, particularly over the next six to 12 months. So, 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 so there's a clear, um, uh, uh, well, I mean, look, so, yeah, so the data is saying one thing, a whole bunch of people, you know, I believe in the complete opposite. Um, and, and, and obviously, you know, there's still a lot of people out there that's gonna be, you know, that are gonna face a very rude shock when, 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 when all of these things in the economy, set, like uh, when, when it starts to play out. Mm. Well, see, it's because it's a religion. I mean, property is a religion in Australia, right? And that religion says property prices only ever go up and they double roughly every seven years, right? If you look at my most recent surveys, there are still loads of people who believe that, even now, even though credit is falling and everything else, right? So it's almost like there's no point in showing them data because people won't actually believe the data. They'll just believe their religion. Yes, and one of the really interesting points on that is is that I'm getting feedback from Australians right across the country who go to licensed financial advisors and the advisors are saying, yes, property goes up every five to seven years. There is no problem. There will be no crash. If you've got a large chunk of cash, go buy an investment property. Great time to buy. 
Um, and, and, and some people are coming back to me and saying, hang on, you and Martin are saying one thing based on um, economic principles, economic history, um, real-time data. My financial advisor is saying something com completely different, very consistent with the mainstream. Um, how do I rectify the, you know, look, the, the, these two di di diametrically opposed positions? A and one, um, you know, the financial advisors who are saying this sort of stuff, they're also caught up in this belief that we are unique, that it's not going to happen to us, we have supernatural powers, the laws of economics stop at our borders, um, uh, and, and we can live on in this nirvana um, going forward forever. Mm. Well, they, of course, are smoking the same dope as a lot of other people, right? And just to give you one example of that, you know, the auction clearance rates are now up for two weeks in, in, the, in the new year, and they're very slightly higher from a clearance rate perspective. But if you look at the volume, it's way down, right? And yet, the number of people that I've read from the property sector saying, see, it's all going to go up now. So again, don't let data get in the way. Just believe what you believe. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so where to from here? I thought, why don't I just um, talk about this really interesting story that a, that a viewer uh, you know, contacted me during the week uh, uh, in terms of what his experience was in Brisbane. So, so this viewer lives in Brisbane, he originally from Ireland. He saw the housing uh, crash in Ireland in 2007, 2008. Um, and he was having a conversation with an individual and basically was saying, well, maybe you don't want to buy now. Maybe you want to um, wait 12 months. Um, and to be honest, this is something you've been saying consistently, uh, whether it's on the mainstream media or on DFA, um, you know, uh, prices are likely to go down over the next six to 12 months. So th there's no need to dramatically rush to, to buy now. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so, so, uh, you know, he, he basically said this to, um, you know, uh, and someone, an Australian born in this country, uh, and, and this Australian gave him a very smug response. And the response was quite staggering in my view. I tried to tell a guy recently not to buy a house in Brisbane, just hold off for a year or so, and in a smug, almost patronising way, told me, this is an island, mate, you're in Australia now. When, when, when this uh, viewer you know, told me this, I said, well, what does that mean? You, you're in Australia now. I mean, I mean, what the laws of economics, the laws of banking, uh, you know, in terms of the, you know, like a, a, the dynamics of debt, somehow these things are suspended in Australia um uh and, and so so yeah so when when i saw this it just like you know i was just shocked by this so, so well, we should we should have a discussion about that it's like i said gravity stops at the border right? yes it's exactly the same principle you know we're different here we don't have gravity indeed indeed so so, so yeah so uh, i mean one of the things i think is going to happen in 2019 2020 is you know um as we start to see more unraveling in the global economy um, and, and even the last week, we got all sorts of very negative news about what's happening, uh, not only in Australia, but around the world, which should be causing alarm to viewers as to, well, where are we sort of headed over the next uh, 12 to 24 months? But there's still a lot of people who have enormous faith in institutions, in the media, in the banks, uh, well, perhaps perhaps not the banks, but at least the you know the Reserve Bank, um, but also in terms of faith, um, in terms in terms of government, parliament, etc. So I, I think that as 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 these economic conditions start to unravel, we're going to see a very big shattering of of people's trust in institutions, um, uh, but also their expectations are going to change uh, quite, quite dramatically. And the unfortunate thing. When I've looked at previous economic crises, I mean, those who are asleep and, and, and can't adjust their expectations um, in time make poor financial decisions based on, um, uh, you know, an, an irrational view of where things are going. They're the ones who financially get stuck. They're the ones who suffer a whole host of social costs because they're not financially prepared. Um, and, and they're still, I mean, if about 50% of people in that survey think that house prices may go up and may go up in you know strongly uh, you know it, it tells me there's still millions of australians out there who who, who are at risk of that you know of, of being psychologically shocked by by how the economy may play out yeah so there's a very interesting little um, story of um the frog and the warming pan i don't know whether you've ever come across this right but that the, this is an analogy that sometimes used right you put a frog in a pan of cold water and you start heating up the water right 
And the frog just sits there and sits there and sits there and doesn't realize that things are changing, right? And the water's getting hotter and hotter and hotter to the point that actually the frog just dies where it is because it effectively has no understanding of things are changing around it, right? Yeah. In a way, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of people who are sort of stuck in this old way of thinking that, you know, things will always be different here, property will always rise, the government will always save us, right? And yet the reality of the information that's coming through is that is not right, and yet they don't see it, they still believe it. Yes. And that's the, really the heart of the thing that I think we're talking about here. And, and, and a lot of reason, uh, look, a lot of, a lot of the reason why people can't see it is, is the type of information and the type of presentation they are seeing from, from a whole host of people in the media who, who are basically saying everything's fine, um, you know, Morrison's saying strong economy, um, you're not seeing anyone in parliament trying to raise the alarm. Um, um, and, 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 you know, one of the obviously interesting characters out there in the financial press is Peter Switzer. <laughs> so, 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 you know, we, Switzer was uh, at, the, uh, at the National Press Club last week asking the RBA governor a question, saying he's being trolled on Twitter, refers to people as Bush economists. Uh, I'm one of those Bush economists. I wonder who that could be, John. <laughs> it, could be, look, it seems to be me. Uh, th- th- then, then, obviously, we did the video uh, last week about the RBA, uh, and, and it looks like Mr. Switzer has, has, has provided some additional commentary to his readership, which, which, uh, which seems to be a critique of our last episode. So, 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 and it really goes to this sort of point about, about uh, reinforcing these traditional beliefs about economics that we're sort of seeing right through, throughout the establishment. So Switzer wrote in, in, in on the 12th of February earlier this week in the Peter Switzer Daily, uh, this is the quote, living in a democracy, we have a right to whinge, uh, but squealing about the RBA not raising interest rates or wondering why they might have to cut rates as the glo- a global economy slows down shows that you don't understand that the economic world we live in is different. Um, well, uh, the reason why, so I, I see this as swipe at, 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 at our, our last episode. So the reason why I've been uh, complaining about interest rate policy is because the because the debt is too large, uh, and, and the reason why the debt is too large is because of interest rate policy, um, because it's so low. So if you cut it down even further. Um, it's likely to add stimulus. Like the RBA government said it's going to add stimulus, and it likely will, and encourage more people to borrow, uh, and, and that becomes uh, like a more more unsustainable. But when Swiss is saying we live in a different world, well, um, I don't think we do. We have five thousand years of knowing when you have too much debt in a society or an economy, um, bad things happen. Um, and, and anyone who believes that we are immune from 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 from, from the course of human history. Uh, you know, they're the type of people who are going to be caught out. And unfortunately, those people who will be caught out are listening to these forms of opinion, which have no empirical basis. Yeah. But you see, if enough people keep saying it, right, there's almost a case of if enough people keep saying it, people will go on believing it. And could it then become self-fulfilling? Right. So that's sort of what a lot of people are saying, whereas I don't believe that to be true for a second. Right. Because the fundamentals of the economy and the fundamentals of the data don't lie. Right. But the way that it's presented and the spin that's added to it effectively just pushes in a completely different direction. Precisely. I mean, I mean, I mean, we're very close to the point of debt situation. So, so there's, a, the, there's a maximum point in which people can borrow and then it becomes completely unsustainable unaffordable and then you're going to start to see defaults well um you know that that has everything to do with with, in terms of maths and mathematics as opposed to um people talking themselves you know that either things are going to be a a positive fantasy for the rest of their lives or things are going to head into the abyss Mm. yep so are there sort of examples then that we can turn to to sort of underscore to people that things are looking a bit sick at the moment. Yeah, yes, yes. So, so, so there's, a, there's a number of key stories and points that, that have popped up in the last few days that, that I think point to um, a very concerning trend. Um, now, uh, when we had a series of videos last year, and I, and, I, and I said, I've been writing these articles about economic Armageddon. What did I say last year? I said, Armageddon is not when house prices fall. It's when, it's when the debt becomes um, uh, sort of uh, unsustainable and people can't meet, the, meet these repayments, whether it's in Australia or, or anywhere around the world. Well, we, we, we saw 
uh, several warnings. We, we saw a few um, flashpoints with corporates, uh, but all, we also starting to see this issue of, of, of debt uh, being an issue that people can't pay. So, so, um, so, so I'll, I'll go through a few examples. So, uh, you know, local, local um, sort of case study is AV Jennings. They came out with a 90% fall in, in, in profits, um, obviously because of the um, sort of tighter uh, lending standards in terms of, uh, you know, not, not as much investor demand for new housing, new apartments, etc. So I, I think that, that this profit warning uh, with this profit outcome is probably the first in a whole series of either small or large developers really facing tough times. So, so they still made a profit, but it was a substanti- substantially lower profit than they previously did. I think we're going to see a lot of losses in 2019, 2020, as uh, particularly in the, uh, developers in the apartment market, whether it's because of the economic the economic conditions or because of things like opal tower and people are basically saying well if, if opal tower can happen it could happen in other developments it's too risky i'm not going to touch them um and people are going to walk away from potentially purchasing um, those sort of properties yeah and add to that the fact that banks are continuing to tighten their lending standards to the development sector right? yes and new approvals are way down and the stock of unsold apartments the ones being built or the ones on the plan continue to rise. Yep. And you can understand why it is that developers are really now up against it. Exactly. So, so, so you know, we had, uh, it's a point too, we had the um, IMF managing director, Christine Lagarde, uh, call, you know, basically warning earlier this week that we're headed towards a global economic storm. Um, and, 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 and Christine had a very interesting uh, sort of uh, phrase around this. So, so I'm going to quote from news.com that sort of reported this a couple of days ago. Uh, so, so this is from the story, IMF warns of global economic storm. Uh, uh, the story goes, and Lagarde also pointed to the risk uh, posed by ri- rising borrowing costs within a context of heavy debt racked up by governments, firms, and households. Exactly what we're saying, too much debt. Debt bubble is in Australia, debt bubble overseas. Um, and then the quote is from, from uh, Lagarde herself, uh, when there are too many clouds, it takes one lightning bolt to start the storm, she said. So, so when I have previously said about an economic shock, so because... I, I've got this question for two years. Um, when's this Armageddon going to happen? And I said, once someone says I can't pay, uh, that that's the, that will unravel financial markets. That will start to spread in terms of what they call contagion, um, and, and then you can get credit markets freezing up like they did in two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. So, 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 so yeah. So that's the lightning bolt. Um, ultimately, this Armageddon happens when when a big fish says we can't pay. Historically. A, a, a recession, depression, financial shock happens in the banking system. But if you have a non-financial corporate who says they can't pay, well, then that obviously will start to spread into the banking system because that's where they largely borrowed the money from. Yep. And we know that debt is rising in the US, corporate debt in the US. We know that uh, in Australia, we've got a lot of households with very high levels of debt. You know, our mortgage stress has never been higher. So almost wherever you look, you see the stresses and strains of a high debt already working through. Exactly. And and one important um, uh, uh, debt milestone that happened this week was U.S. government debt, federal government debt, passed 22 trillion for the first time on record. So so, so again, um, you know, the Congress doesn't seem too worried about public sector debt in the U.S. But I mean, like a lot of um, smart Americans, in particular investors, know that um, the, the quantum of public sector debt, which is more than 100% of GDP, um, it, it, that is not sustainable um, probably now, but also in the long term. So I mean, I mean, if, 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 the, if the bond yields on, on, on US Treasury bonds were to go up dramatically, uh, I mean, I mean the, the, government, the US government would, would struggle to meet all of its existing commitments, plus pay the additional interest when they have to do new um, uh, bond auctions. Um, and, and that can you know, unravel US federal government finances very, very quickly. In China, 2018 saw the largest volume of corporate defaults in China. Um, so about 119 uh, billion yuan um, happened last year. So uh, we had two big corporates in the last couple of weeks um, who, who basically missed bond repayments. Um, uh, so one of them defaulted last year, restructured their debt, promised they would pay this year, still can't pay. And then another one who was supposed to make um, uh, certain repayments 
basically uh, you know like that they missed those deadlines. So 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 this has caused some panic uh, in China, um, and the Chinese government has now ordered a a, a review of, of sort of uh, corporate bonds um, to obviously find out well who has the capacity to pay, who has the capacity not to pay, and, and obviously if you start to say so there is. An expectation we're going to see a pickup in corporate defaults in China, and the Chinese bubble is the biggest of them all uh, compared to any other country. So, so you know, we don't have a lot of good reporting in this country about what's happening specifically in China with specific firms in specific regions. But it it could well be that that one morning you wake up and you hear of some big uh, Chinese firm, Chinese bank, um, um, sort of saying we're done. Uh, and that starts to unravel the Chinese economy. And because we are so, um, um, because we're so reliant on China, whether it's about trade or capital investment into our property sector, etc., uh, you know that China shock um, could, could could quickly come into the Australian economy, you know, within days or weeks, uh, and and really make, you know catch a lot of people off guard. And of course, the uh, capital regime in China for the banks, they've loosened those settings a little bit to give banks a little more wriggle room with regard to their capital ratios, which is another leading indicator of more trouble ahead. Yes, yes. Now, now look, one thing that really didn't get a lot of prominent attention um, um, in the Australian press is the Italian economy went in, into recession like basically in the last week and a half. So, so you're starting to see um, Europe slow. So Italy's gone into recession. Um, in the next few hours, we're going to see what the German number is. Uh, there is an expectation that Germany, as the largest economy in Europe, will go into recession itself. And then later in February, we'll see what happens in Sweden and Switzerland because there's a risk that they could go into recession as well. So, so obviously, Italy is, is obviously uh, very significant because they are one of the most indebted governments in Europe. Um, um, and obviously, if uh, their growth is slowing, that means that revenue going to the government coffers will be down. That, that will probably mean that the sustainability of Italian, Italian government debt, particularly because the ECB said they're going to stop QE, um, you know, that, that could unravel the Italian, the Italian situation very, very quickly. So, 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 we saw, so we saw this week that uh, CBC reported that 7 million Americans are late on their repayments for, uh, in terms of their auto loans. Auto loans uh, you know, is, a, is a huge amount of debt. It makes up 9% of all household debt. Household debt um, in America is in excess of 13 trillion. So US household debt is more than what it was before the GFC in terms of the, in terms of the nominal amount. 9% is, uh, is, is these auto loans. Uh, and basically 7 million Americans are late on their repayments. So we're starting to see the Americans um, um, you know, uh, struggling to pay these debts. So the Chinese are struggling, the Americans are struggling, um, Europe is, 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 certain parts of Europe are going into recession. Um, and, and obviously this is where Lagarde is saying one lightning bolt and the whole thing blows up. And yet there's still people here saying we're unique. Um, these things don't impact us. We have supernatural powers. Swiss is saying um, we live in a different economic world. Well, debt is debt. It's been like that for 5,000 years. Um, and if, if you've got too much of it and you can't service it, um, you fall into all sorts of economic and social horrors. Ah, oh, but John, 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 that's all overseas. That's over there. That's nothing to do with us. We're here in Australia. We're an island nation, right? We've got a flexible exchange rate. Can't we cope? Can't, can't, can't we cope? Well, uh, we, we have record uh, net foreign debt. Um, so, so, so uh, you know, because, because the thing is, is that I mean, what, what happens... When, when overseas, if, over, if corporates or households or governments overseas default, what actually happens? It means that the availability of credit, um, you know, that, that will freeze up. Um, our, our foreign debt has about a half a trillion dollars of, you know, that, that has matured about 90 days. So, so we have an enormous reliance on these foreign credit markets. So if they start to freeze up or if the price of credit goes up dramatically, um, the banks will be hit with that. They will pass on to us. And so in a globalized internet, interconnected economy, um, you know, we are extremely fragile. We're, we're effectively a sitting, a sitting duck because there is so much... Um, there are so many ways in which these international forces can impact us, and, uh, and now in a globalized economy, they can they can impact us much more quickly than previous years gone by. And isn't that the point that we are not disconnected? We might be an island nation, but our financial system, uh, you know, 
the economies here and overseas. Um, in fact, most of our um, exports, of course, drive a lot of our GDP and any of that. So, so wherever you look at it, we're absolutely tentacly connected to the rest of the world, right? Exactly. So trying to persuade anybody that we are isolated and therefore not going to be impacted and insulated from all of these things is just shouting in the wind. It's completely unreasonable to expect that to be the case. Exactly. So, 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 so really to sum up the conversation, um, uh, we, are, uh, we are as ordinary as any other country in the world. We do not have su supernatural powers. Um, any Australian who thinks she'll be right, well, my philosophy has always been she'll be right if we make it right um, and, and the people's interests will be served when people uh, become awake they take responsibility for their own economic circumstances, they become educated, and they take appropriate action to mitigate the risks that are coming down the pike. So the message is, wake up and smell the roses, John. Absolutely. John, thank you very much. Thank you. John Adams, Martin North, if for the interest of the people, check back next time for our next episode. Thanks for watching.